Ooh, another fun question. Uh, we definitely will see this again. Uh, I don't remember if it was in another question in this chapter or definitely next chapter. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and deal with it. So uh, a certain transmission line is constructed from two thin metal ribbons of width W and a very small distance H, much less than W. Um, so the current travels down one strip and back along the other. In each case, it spreads out uniformly over the surface of the ribbon. Um, a, find the capacitance per unit length, uh, curly C. Find the inductance per unit length, curly L. What is the product of L and C numerically? If the strips are insulated from one another by non-conducting material permittivity epsilon and permeability mu, what is the product of LC? What is the propagation speed? All right, let's go ahead and draw it out. We see we have width H uh, separated by some little distance, or excuse me, width W separated by some little distance H, length L, and you see that with I traveling down uh, from left to right and I traveling back down from right to left, we see the direction of the field inside. Okay, use the right hand rule, field goes uh, in between, goes inside, it goes up. All right, so it's a pretty quick problem. Let's just go ahead and dive in. We see that for a parallel plate capacitor, E is equal to sigma over epsilon, where uh, sigma is the uh, surface charge, which is just the surface is uh, W times L. And so Q is spread out over the whole thing. So we see that E is equal to Q over WL epsilon naught. Capacitance was equal to um, C over, or yeah, capacitance per unit length is C over L, but capacitance was equal to QV. And so we know that uh, V for this was um, E times D, but D here is H, the displacement. So we're left with Q over E times H uh, times L. And then we just sub in what E was. And you see we had a lot of cancellations divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. Thus we get QL or the Q and L's canceling. So we're left with omega or not omega, uh epsilon naught W over H. Pretty nice. Again for parallel plates, we see that B is equal to mu K, uh mu naught K, where K is equal to the uh surface current density. Um and then you see so we would divide uh, I by W. All right, pretty easy there. Uh, again, at inductance per unit length is L over is big L over little L, which we see is phi over I. So drop them down. We see phi is equal to BHL, okay, over the area. That makes sense. Um, inside, anyways. So then the L's cancel again. We like that. We see B. Uh, we see what the field is. So we plug that in. So now we see that the I, L, I and L components cancel. And if you have a fraction in the numerator, you just drop the denominator down. Uh, so once that cancels through, you get mu naught H over W. Um, all right, we're seeing pretty similar stuff here. Numerically, then the product of C and L, well, the W's and H's cancel is equal to mu, uh, is equal to epsilon naught mu naught, which we've seen before. Um, so here what we see is that their product is equal to 1.12 times 10 to the negative 7. Um, and this is uh, S squared per meter squared. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, it's clearly related to the speed of light in some fraction um, because of the product epsilon naught and mu naught. Now for D, uh, for the displacement or some permittivity, we have D is equal to uh, sigma. So E is equal to D over epsilon, so that's sigma over epsilon, i.e. replace uh, epsilon naught with epsilon. H equals K, so the B field is equal to mu H, so that's equal to mu B, so we replace mu naught with mu, and we see that the product is equal to epsilon mu. And V is equal to 1 over the square root of CL, which is equal to 1 over the square root of epsilon mu. Pretty easy, but definitely results that we'll come back to again.